Welcome to another episode of Dominic Does DIY. Today we'll be going over some of the Arduino code snippets to understand how to use a PWM output and what the inner workings of the driver are really doing. We will begin by doing easy mode using the Arduino's analog write output, and then we'll work behind the scenes driving into the details of the output compare register and setting it up to be able to make our personalized PWM that can operate at a much higher frequency and a much faster pulse width. For easy mode, we're just going to use the analog write function built into Arduino. Looking at the Arduino website and the analog write function, I'm using the UNO board, and we can see from the website that the UNO has specific dedicated PWM pins, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11, and a specific frequency when using the analog write. It's 490 hertz, and pins 5 and 6 can go up to 980 hertz. These pins are used because the Mega 328P has output compare registers mapped to these pins. We will examine these registers in more detail when we take a look at how to personalize our PWM in a little bit. But as we remember with a comparator, now the output compare register is nothing very tricky. It is literally a comparator. That's why they call it the output compare register. It's comparing two values and then giving an output. As we remember from the comparator episode, all a comparator does is it has no feedback back to the inputs and our output of the comparator, if n plus is greater than n minus, then we will output a high. And if not, then we will output a low. The beauty of using the PWM output is it is hardware independent. Once you start the PWM, it just outputs that PWM. You don't have to do anything with firmware to keep the pulse going. Whereas if we were going to do the same thing in software, we'd have to create some sort of event-based interrupt that would then toggle bits as needed or just lock up our code bit banging with no ops or something like that. And we really wouldn't be able to do anything except that PWM output. We do not want to take up software time doing these PWM outputs if all we're doing is trying to out output to an LED to control its brightness levels. We would rather just turn the PWM on and then have the LED be whatever brightness level we set it to, or a buzzer or whatever. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the code. So writing the Arduino code for a PWM output is pretty simple if we just use the basic analog write feature. Uh, literally all you gotta do is use analog write, the pin number that you're using, and then the duty cycle that you wanna give it. So the standard analog write for Arduino is going to be based on an eight bit uh, limitation where 255 is going to be 100% duty cycle and zero is 0% 0 duty cycle. So I chose here 127 for a 50% duty cycle. And of course, since I chose pin nine, that is going to be at the 480 hertz signal. So let's go ahead and run this and then take a look at the scope and see that it, this is what we expect to get. Right, it's a 50% duty cycle with 480 hertz. So it gives us exactly what we expect, a 50% duty cycle at 480 hertz. So no big surprise there. In order that we can see something a little different happening on this analog right, I just updated the code a little bit and added this integer brightness and this Boolean increase brightness. And so what I'm doing is basically changing the analog right output based on the brightness value and so it just increments from low to high and then high to low. So we can see the LED getting brighter and dimmer uh, with the change in the PWM. So let's take a look at that on the actual board. What I had set up is I took the Arduino and on that output pin nine, I just took it up to an LED to do a little bit of brightness control. So we can see here, this is the Arduino board and you can see the LED I'm not sure if you can pick it up. I hope you can. But you can see that the LED is getting brighter and dimmer. I should probably have it last longer. But anyway, it is what it is. So we can just look at the scope though. And if we go over to the scope, we can see that my frequency stays the same. All I'm doing is I'm changing the duty cycle. And so of course, the way that this LED is hooked up, if we look at it, I've got the LED pulled to five volts. So the LED is being pulled high to five volts through a 220 ohm resistor. 
and I am just going to sync current through the Arduino. So when we look at the scope, the LED is actually turning on based on the time that it is low. That when the duty cycle is near 100%, the LED turns off. And then as the duty cycle reaches zero, I get the brightest LED. That is because I'm using it as a sink and not a source. So easy mode is pretty easy. And if it suits your needs, then you're good to go. If you don't need to have a signal to turn on in less than eight microseconds, or you can work with that, and you don't need a period of less than or greater than two milliseconds, then the 480 hertz and just using analog right, right is great. But this episode, we actually want to go into the details so we can kind of be a little more fluid with what we want our PWM to do. So when we look at the data sheet for the Mega, we can actually see that it has a fast PWM mode. And so we're going to look at that one. It's got some other modes in it, but we're going to today focus on the fast PWM mode. So the way that the fast PWM mode it works is it's got a couple characteristics built into this output compare module. And it's got something called the top value, and it's got something called the trigger value, right? And then it's got the reset value. And so what basically happens is the output compare register, one of the things that it compares is the timer counter. And it takes a look at the timer counter. And once the timer counter reaches the top, it just resets and goes back down to zero. And so it just it's clocking up and then resets every time it hits the top value. Then what happens on the output compare pin, right, which is that PWM pin on the output, well, every time the OCR value, every time that, that timer counter reaches the OCR value, right, the output compare register value, then it'll actually output a high on the non-inverting output when it's set up as a non-inverting output. So you can see here as the top, so long as the output compare register, as long as that value is the top value or greater than the T count value, then the output will remain the same. But as soon as the T count value is greater than the output compare register value, then the output actually changes state. And then it'll, and it does this, and that's how the PWM is set. So if we have a known top, that represents our frequency. We have our OCR, that's our duty cycle. And then all we gotta do is modify these values inside the microcontroller and then we can set up the best possible frequency and duty cycle for our need. So let's take a look about these registers a little bit so we can kind of understand what it is that we need to do. The first register we're going to look at is the TCCR1A register. And so here we can see bit seven and six is the output compare mode for the output compare register 1A and bits five and four, those are the compare mode for output compare register 1B. And then we have the wave generation mode, bits one and two over there in bits one and zero of the TCCR 1A register. So we can just look down here at table 15.3 and what we want is we actually want an inverting mode. We don't want to be in the non-inverting mode because remember our LED, it's backwards. So we don't want to have to flip our brain. Let's flip the microcontroller. Now for the wave generation mode bit, actually you can see here the wave generation mode in table 15.5, we can see that there's actually four bits that control, control the wave generation mode, the waveform generation mode. And so what we want is, remember the timer counter mode of operation? we were looking for the fast PWM. So they only have a few fast PWM selections here, a few modes that you can choose from. So modes five, six, and seven are the fast PWM mode with a fixed period. That period is either an eight, nine, or 10 bit period based on the timer counter. Mode 14 is going to be a more specialized PWM. For what we're gonna be able to do with this one is actually control and change our period because the top is no longer a fixed value but the top is actually an icr value 
And so we can set the ICR value, and then we can uh, change we can change the top value, which means we can have a variable frequency for our PWM, and we don't have it fixed like in modes five, six, and seven. And then the same thing goes for fifteen, except now if you make OCR one A the top value, then actually you'll never be able to actually trigger, and it'll just always be in the off state. So the next register is the TCCR1B register, and this is the other half of the timer control register. And we can see here, bits four and three, these ones are the other half of the wave generation mode. Bits two through zero, that is our clock select bit. And this is actually, this is the true number that gets compared in the, in the register. So even though in the, in the image, it showed that that top value, the reset value was based on timer counter, but actually that timer counter goes through then a uh, prescaler and it's that prescale value that gets compared to the value. So now looking at the code, again, we're gonna be able to do still all this stuff in setup because it's a PWM, it's all hardware based. We're just changing the timing from the analog write function. So the first thing I do is set PB1 to an output. So PB1 is actually mapped to pin nine on the Arduino which is the output compare 1A register, which is the one we are going to be working with. The next thing we got to do is we got to clear the timer registers, because remember when Arduino booted up, it's setting these registers to what it wants to set them for. Next, we set inverting mode. Remember, in order to get inverting mode, we needed to have the A1 and A0 bit, means that set to one. And we also want to engage the fast PWM mode 14, which is so to allow us to have a variable frequency. We also wanted to set the prescaler to one. We wanted no prescaler. So in the TCCR one B register, we go ahead and set the CS 10 register to one. So next we got to set the top value for the comparator. So I set ICR one to 65, 535. Um, this is why I'm actually using this register as opposed to the other register, time, timer one compare register, actually uses a 16-bit timer where the other ones use an 8-bit timer. So, and then of course, we got to set our trigger for our duty cycle. So our duty cycle, we're going to go ahead and set, we'll just pick an arbitrary number, let's say 50, around 50% duty cycle, All right, 325. So we'll do about half duty cycle, 50% duty cycle. And actually we'll just do one. We'll do a one first, and then that'll show us what our max period is and what our minimum duty cycle is. What's the fastest pulse that we can do using this setup. So let's go ahead and program it. So we set the pulse width to be count, uh, one counter. And now we can see that instead of having an eight microsecond minimum pulse width, we actually can get down to a pulse width of 124 nanoseconds when we set the output to uh, output bit to one. That is the fastest output pulse that we can we can do. Then let us see what the period is now. So here we can see we have a frequency of 244 hertz and a period of four milliseconds. I had to increase the duty cycle to 50% because when I was running at that one click at, at 124 nanoseconds, I wasn't able to actually pick up a period on my scope because my scope isn't that great. So I just had to increase the on time a little bit in order to see the period. So we actually don't need the scope to actually understand what our fast on time is and what our period is, we can actually just calculate it all out so we can come to understand what it is that we want to do. Right? We know that our switching frequency of the Arduino itself, the microcontroller is 16 megahertz. We threw on a prescaler of one, right? We can choose between 8, 64, 256, or 1024, but we put prescaler of one there, which gave us a uh, operating frequency for our output control module uh, for 16 megahertz which means that we have a tick every 62.5 nanoseconds. And of course, since we have a 16-bit timer, the top end of that ISR at 65,535 is going to give us a period 
of 4.09 milliseconds, as we saw on the scope, and a frequency of 244, which we also saw on the scope. So we can calculate all this out to actually determine what it is that we want to do. So you are limited by the tick. So on this instance, we couldn't get any kind of duty cycle faster than this 62.5. And the reason that the one tick is um, 124, 125 nanoseconds instead of 62.5 for one tick, it's just because it requires, um, there's always a minimum of one tick when you're going through this because the system outputs one inherently. So it's one plus whatever you have. So I went ahead and rearranged this a little bit. And instead of actually taking the top value and then understanding the frequency like I did originally up here, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna say, all right, I have a operating frequency that I wanna get. I have a buzzer, I want the buzzer to run at 4K. So what do I have to have my settings at in order to make this happen, right? This is just one instance, but we know that if I wanted to run it at 4K, the easy mode isn't going to work, right? We're not going to be able to make that happen, right? So if I want a 4 kilohertz PWM, right, and I can just do a 50% duty cycle for the buzzer, um, what is it that I need? Well, if I have a prescaler of 1, that means that my, I'm going to have to set my top to 4,000. 4,000 is well within a 16-bit value. So let's go ahead and take these values and then put it into the program and upload the program and take a look at the graph and see if the if we just change the top to 4,000, that means our ICR1 value, we want to make that 4,000. And then we want to make our OCR1A, we want a 50% duty cycle. So we just make that 2,000, upload that, and then we'll take a look at the waveform coming off of the scope. Sure enough. Just as expected, we got our 4 kilohertz frequency with a 50% duty cycle, just as expected. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll try a 1 megahertz because that gives us 16 bits to play with. So we can actually do like a 25 or a 50% duty cycle um, and see what the output is. But for fir first run, let's do 4 megahertz. And what we'll do is uh, we know that 4 megahertz, it was a uh, ICR of 4. And we know since the 4 megahertz was 250 nanoseconds, we know that one tick is really 125 nanoseconds. So we'll just put the trip level at 1. And so that should give us a 50% duty cycle. So let's go ahead and program it and see what the scope shows. So we can see here, actually the trying to push it to 4 megahertz uh, was a little much. Uh, because of the, just the inner workings and the switching from the output compare register and things like that, it looks like the best we could do is 3.2 megahertz, something like that. So we can't quite go to four. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we go to one megahertz. We should be able to do that one and still have some lever, some headroom to be able to maneuver a little bit. So here we can see, I went ahead and uh, set the ICR1 value to 16 for 1 megahertz, and I set the trip level, the OCR1A, to 8 for a 50% duty cycle. This one's pretty good. 940 kilohertz, that's pretty close to 1 megahertz. And uh, the duty cycle is about 500 nanoseconds for 1 microsecond, so it looks like we can pull off a 50% duty cycle pretty easily. So not too, not too bad for 1 megahertz. I would say this is probably the fastest that you can push it. So I'll do one more test. What I'll do is I'll run the uh, increasing, decreasing brightness code. And then we should be able to see the duty cycle shift left and right pretty smoothly. So I set up the code to kind of cycle through the uh, duty cycle. And it looks like it runs pretty smooth. So it's one megahertz and uh, moving up and down between one to 99% duty cycle. Um, so yeah, looks good. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. And as always, like, subscribe, share the video, comment down below if you have any questions or uh, you want to see something else. And I'll be happy to respond. Thanks all that have subscribed. So until next time, have a good one. And I'll see you later. Bye.